What is up? Phil here, and welcome to another edition of the Hateful Truth video game review series. And uh, today we're going to tackle a game that attempts to really perfect the formula of the sandbox game, but not take it too seriously, okay? This game, what it's attempting to do is make the a game where you can just sit down, jump into it, and have crazy fun, and not have to worry about any kind of overly serious arcing storyline or, you know, making the right integral choice at the right time during the game because it might negatively affect something that's going on. And it's not really a game where you're gri it's gripping and you want to know what's going to happen next. It's more of a game where you just want to keep playing it because it's fun for the sake of being crazy fun. So the game we're talking about today is Saints Row the Third which really is just Saints Row 3. A lot of people get make it confused. What is it, Saints Row the Third? Like, what is it, Shrek the Third? Try to make it sound fancy. But uh, what Saints Row the Third is, is a sandbox game. It is a game where you are in the <clears throat> the town of, I believe it's Steelwater or Steelport, something like that. And uh, Steelport, it says on the back of the box. And uh, you are a gang called the Saints, and you are competing against other rival gangs, including Luchadors, uh, these weird emo techie kind of guys and this like classy style gang, okay? And so, your goal in Saints Row the Third is to make your gang number one. And you do that through multiple different things. You can actually take advantage of the open world gameplay to do different styles of missions that will allow you to, say, conquer certain territories. So you might be driving around a certain neighborhood that's really dominated by the luchadors and see a group of the luchadors there and the mission is kill them all. If you kill them all, you take air over a part of that, the city which allows you to actually start making money uh, because you own that part of the city and, uh, and so on and so forth. You can also buy businesses, you can buy buildings around the city that basically become your property and then you get constant income from those buildings. But this might, right now, to you, might sound kind of like, ah, oh, this is more, what is this, an economic game like SimCity where you're trying to make money and stuff like that? You know what? In a way, it is. It kind of takes a lot of the gameplay from a game like SimCity and puts it into it, but it's definitely not that complicated, and it's definitely not that serious. This game is an off-the-wall, irreverent, sexual humor kind of deal. Definitely earned its M rating, let's put it that way. This is not a game for kids. I would not want anyone under the age of 17 playing this game because of the kind of crazy shit that happens. Um, <clears throat> so, the story of Saints Row the Third, pretty straightforward. You are the Third Street Saints, right? Third Street Saints, the name of the gang. And you have some returning characters from the previous Saints Row games, including Shondi, Johnny Gat, Pierce. Uh, so there are some people who come back, and there are some new characters that are introduced through this game as well uh, that I think will probably stand out as the series goes on further. And uh, the story is really nothing that I could explain because the story is so insanely off the wall that so much crazy shit happens. Let me just, uh, without spoiling anything, giving you any specifics, let me put it to you this way. Luchador wrestlers, like I said, emo techies, um, the government, a senator putting out an edict to try to control all of this, the gangs of the city, so a SWAT team that kind of comes in to, to take that over for the police who are failing at doing so. A zombie invasion, going into cyberspace to destroy avatars in video games, going to outer space, and a crazy climactic ending with epic fucking music from the 1980s. I mean, it's the craziest fucking thing you can expect. Insane stuff happens in Saints Row the Third, and there's never a moment where you're having a dull moment. And it really, if you're just going along with the story of this game, it is action-packed. You're going from mission to mission doing cr crazy funny stuff, but still fun, running and gunning. I really think that the third-person gameplay here is really well done, especially because it's not like Grand Theft Auto 4 in the case where everything auto-locks on and you die really quickly. It's more of an easier-style gameplay. Definitely a lot more cartoony, if anything. All the graphics and everything in the game are very cartoonish, but they're done that way on purpose because they want you to understand this game isn't a serious game. It's a game just meant to have a lot of irreverent fun. Uh, that being said, the gameplay isn't bad be just because it's easy. It actually ends up being a hell of a lot of fun being able to take on entire gangs by yourself or calling up some of your homies who can come for an assist and, uh, and help you out in these kind of gang fights. So, 
That's just like the main plot and the main gameplay of Saints Row the Third for that story. However, outside of the story, there is an insane amount of side missions and side things that you can do. There's a whole assassination um, side mission, which is kind of similar to one from Grand Theft Auto 4, where you get phone calls and you find out you're supposed to assassinate certain people in the city, and if you do it, you get money and you get respect. Respect is what they call the experience points in this game, so where the more missions you complete, you get what's called respect, and then you'll level up, and once you level up, you're able to buy better upgrades. So, for example, more, eight, more health, um, you take less damage, you can get better weapons, stuff like that. So, there's assassination missions, there are car theft missions where you have to steal certain cars and get away from the police who are pursuing you. There are, like I said, real estate you can buy, stores you can buy, and based off of that you can upgrade your weapons to higher levels. You can steal cars, drive them into the car store, and customize, completely trick out your car. And the first thing I did in the game was trick out a car, made it purple, put all these decal spoilers on it, made it topless, put tints on the windows, and I put uh, lights underneath the car, purple lights, so at night you can see purple lights shining on the street underneath my car. It's freaking awesome, and if you like that kind of gameplay, this is your kind of game. Let me tell you, the, the, just the, the amount of fun that you can have in a sandbox style game doing all kinds of different things. Now, I haven't even mentioned the side jobs yet. The side jobs are those funny little missions, mini games and such that have always been a part of the Saints Row series, and they make a return in Saints Row the Third. Some of the side jobs include escort missions where you have to go with someone while they're doing drug deals. Uh, or selling things, you know, they probably don't say drug deals because they don't they don't want to say that in, in the game itself, but, you know, that someone's selling something to someone, you have to defend them as you, the enemy gangs come and try to attack them. There are missions where you have to take guys to pick up hookers and they have sex in the back of the car and you have to stay away from the paparazzi so that the paparazzi don't get footage of these people having sex. That's pretty crazy, isn't it? Uh, there's... I'm just trying to think of so, there's so many different kinds. There's tank missions where you're in a giant tank driving around the city and your goal is to destroy as much as possible with an allotted time limit. So there's all kinds of this crazy, insane side missions that used to be in the Saints Row. The same kind of stuff is in this game. And it's fun as hell. Um, talking about the soundtrack, we definitely have to talk about the soundtrack. Outstanding. Saints Row the Third takes some really popular and, and, and interesting music from all different genres and throws it together into this game uh, that, uh, of a soundtrack you can control in any car or any vehicle that you're in by just turning the radio over to a different station. So you've got all kinds of music from alternative rock from the 90s like Bush Machine Head or Sublime's What I Got. You're going over to <clears throat> popular hip-hop rap music like Kanye West is in this game. Going to classical, there's a classical music station. There's a, a reggaeton station, so you've got people like Pitbull and those, those kind of people uh, doing that kind of music. Just, you know, all these different genres of music are in the game, which is freaking awesome. And also, there's an Adult Swim channel. Adult Swim is actually the adult cartoon-oriented block of footage on Cartoon Network. And there's so there's going to be songs there from Venture Brothers, from Aqua Teen Hunger Force, all kinds of cool stuff. Um, and I really enjoyed the music. I actually liked how during certain epic parts of the game, the game plays like certain songs. Like during my ending, now there's two different endings to the game, and I so far I've only done one of them. But during my ending was like an epic mission, and they started playing uh, "Holding Out for a Hero" by uh, Bonnie Tyler, which is a hilarious song from the '80s. It's so freaking over dramatic and epic. But everyone, I think, it really got known for being in the ending of Short Circuit 2, which had this long, drawn-out ending where you had to try to like save. Uh, it was, you know, the robot Johnny Five trying to stop someone from getting away with, with uh, all this stolen goods. And it's kind of similar here where you you actually end up in like a boat and you're driving in the water and you're like, fuck, this seems just like the end of Short Circuit 2. It's playing the same song and everything. So pretty funny, a lot of tongue-in-cheek humor and a lot of references like that to different things. You're going to see jokes about like Star Wars, uh, jokes about all kinds of different pop culture things going on in this game, which is pretty neat. Going along with that, the voice acting is good. You have your, your standard cast of people who do the voice acting of the main characters, but there are also a lot of celebrity cameos, including Hulk Hogan and Rob Van Dam, who I never expected would have been in this game, Sasha Gray, who's a porn star, or I guess retired porn star, I guess everyone's saying she doesn't do porn anymore, and that's why she's doing projects like this, and uh, of all people, Burt Reynolds. Burt Reynolds plays himself in this game, and yes, he actually is an important character to the story, 
wow, what the hell, what a crazy mishmash of celebrity voices that they put into this game. But it works. For what it is, the game makes no fucking sense. Let's put it this way. It's meant to be just irreverent fun, irreverent humor, and it really, I think, succeeds at what its goal was. A fun, open-world sandbox game where you can jump in and just blow shit up, have fun. You're not putting way too much effort into anything you really do with this game. You're just trying to enjoy yourself and do crazy shit. And there's nothing funnier than being able to run up with a giant 10-foot-long purple dildo stick and beat the living shit out of a cop with it. I can't believe I just said that, but that's the truth about Saints Row the Third. You get to do crazy shit like that and have fun with it, and that's really what the enjoyment of this game is. Now, that being said, I'd like to tell you about some things that I really liked about the game and some things that I don't like about the game. Because there are some things that I was a little disappointed with, okay? Things I like about the game. First of all, the length. I was very pleased with the length of this game. A 12-hour long campaign. And sure, it could have been a little shorter. There was about maybe two, two and a half hours where I was doing side content rather than focusing on the main campaign of the game. Uh, I, was, I was so enthralled doing all these side missions and side jobs and such. There are three main islands in the game, and I actually completely took over one of them. So it took me about two, two and a half hours to do that. So really the campaign's about ten hours long. And if you were to add in doing all of the side missions in the game and all the side content and objectives, you're probably talking, since it took maybe roughly two, two and a half hours for that island, maybe six to eight additional hours. So you can probably get about 20 hours of gameplay out of Saints Row the Third, which is pretty good bang for your buck in this day and age for a retail game. So I'm pleased with that. Um, again, the irreverency, the humor, the celebrity cameos, the game is entertaining as hell. You will have a blast playing Saints Row the Third. Whether or not you've ever played any of the previous Saints Row games, you're going to like this game if you just are a fan of just sitting down and not really taking it too seriously, but just having some really fun. You want to have a laugh. You want to listen to some good music. You want to just fucking blow shit up. This is the game for you, and that's really a great positive of the game. I really think what they've managed to do with Saints Row the Third is cut out all the the over-complicated bullshit and say, we're just going to make a game that's fun to play. That's what we want. A game where you're laughing, you're you're having exciting giant battles with, with you know giant set pieces with explosions left and right, and you're getting you know money's coming in, points are coming in. It feels it's very arcadey style, and it's fun because of that. I think that if they tried to make this Saints Row series too serious, that it probably would have gone astray. You wouldn't want to have a more serious story like Nico Bellic's story from Grand Theft Auto 4. I don't care about that. I want something that's just funny as hell and I can play and and and, and enjoy and not have to worry about this over serious nature of the game. So that's what I really like about Saints Row the Third. Um, some things I don't like about the game. Well, first of all, I do have to say I was a little disappointed with the fact that a lot of my favorite things from Saints Row 2 were left out. So, for example, one of my favorite side missions to do, or side jobs in Saints Row 2, I think I forget what it was called, like Fecal Art or something like that, where you drove around a sewage truck and sprayed shit all over the place. And you actually got points for the more that you destroyed. I love that. That was fucking fun as hell. It was crazy, stupid, disgusting, but it was fun. And, unfortunately, lots of the things that I think were fan favorites from Saints Row 2 never come make uh, their, their appearance in Saints Row the Third. In fact, it seems like they really did go in a direction where they wanted to do all kinds of new stuff rather than the old tried and, uh, older stuff coming back as like a, a, a you know, fan, uh, fan service legacy, you know, leftovers. They really went for new stuff in this game. So I can understand why maybe they wanted to really prove that they could make a game that didn't have to copy the stuff from the previous Saints games and it was still going to be good, but I was still pretty disappointed with the fact that that happened, that there was some of my favorite stuff in the game. Number two, there are a couple times in the story of the game, and actually with some of the side missions as well, where the difficulty does spike. You'll be doing, all of a sudden you'll be doing a fight where you're taking massive damage, and you didn't know that you were going to be taking massive damage, so you didn't upgrade your defense, you didn't upgrade your health before this particular mission. And there's no, unless you're earning massive amounts of money and you have it on surplus, it's not like you could just upgrade on the fly whenever you want you have to be earning money to upgrade. So you might have spent your upgrades on other stuff, and now it's really hard to beat this certain mission. Um, sometimes you'll be in like a really confined space and get knocked into a corner, and the camera will screw up, and you can't even move anymore. Um, sometimes you'll get set on fire, and you'll be running on fire for like 15 seconds, and you can't put yourself out. It's really frustrating uh, for a lot of the time. So the difficulty spikes are a little bit annoying, 
not to say the game is overly hard in any way. Once you play the replay the missions a couple of times, you will beat them. But it is a little annoying that you know you're free flowing through this game, enjoying it, and all of a sudden here's a mission that's really fucking hard, and you have to replay it four times to beat it when everything else up to now was easy to you, and you don't understand why all suddenly the difficulty jumps so much. Uh, there are some annoying game bugs. Nothing that breaks the game too much, as long as you are saving frequently. And I do have to say that I, I really did like the checkpoint system for the most part. There were only maybe one or two times where I thought that a checkpoint was too few and f uh, far between on a certain mission. But the checkpoints usually are very, very well timed. So if something goes wrong, you can just load the checkpoint and you don't really lose more than maybe a minute or two of gameplay. Case in point, there was a mission where... He said, get to, get to a truck and, and steal it. And I stole the truck, and it just, it just didn't recognize that I stole the truck. No matter what I did, it would, the game would not recognize that I had stolen it. And then all I did was reload the checkpoint, and I, it worked instantly. I stole the truck, and it worked fine. Uh, there's also some, some weird checkpoint placement where, like, you'll die, and all of a sudden the game will resume and give you the benefit of the doubt, like you beat what you were doing. And you kind of like scratching your head like, well, I don't remember beating that, but I guess that I, the game's giving me the benefit of the doubt for whatever reason. Um, some other weird game bugs, um, people fusing inside of objects, like all of a sudden a guy's inside of a lamppost and you're like, what the hell? Or a lot of the times what annoyed me was like, I'd be in a tank and there'd be a cutscene, and then when they returned from the cutscene, I'd still be surrounded by the enemies I was fighting before the cutscene, but they put me outside of the tank, so I'm getting shot at from all directions. Like, why the fuck did they do that? Why couldn't they just leave me in the vehicle that I was in? So that is a little bit annoying. Um, some crappy AI with your homies. Now, your homies are your, your gang members who are there to help you uh, a lot in, in, during the missions. Some of the AI is atrocious. Like, Pierce in particular, he just gets killed all the fucking time. And you are going to be a little bit annoyed that you have to constantly have to be reviving these people every single mission. You wish that they could just stay alive for, for a long enough time. Um, and then also the AI of some of the characters that you need to do side missions for are pretty annoying. So, for example, there's some missions where you need to steal hookers, okay? You're stealing hookers to put them... For your or to work for your gang, and so you're trying to save them, and you're in a car. And like, get in the car, get in the car. They don't get in. They'll walk around the car. They'll dick around. Oh, then they'll get shot by someone. They'll fall down, and then they'll bumble around, and then they'll try to get the door. Oh, for some reason the door won't open. It can be really annoying in, in, in a case like, especially if you're playing the harder level side missions. When something doesn't function properly, it really will piss you off. So. Some of that kind of stuff, pretty annoying, but it's nothing that's game-breaking and it's nothing that's going to force you to replay. You know what I mean? It's, it's not a, horror, a horrible bug that prevents you from playing the game. It's just minor annoyances here and there. And you probably kind of got to expect that with an open-world game like this, with the amount of content that's in it. Um, it really, you know, it is what it is. So for being an open-world, just jump in and have fun, cartoonish, colorful experience, Saints Row the Third, I think, is actually a massive success. Now, is this game a Game of the Year contender? No, it can't be a Game of the Year contender, because, number one, it's... It, there are other games that you're going to play this year that you're going to get, like, a feeling for. When you play Uncharted 3, you're going to say, wow, that was a great story. You know, I'm really glad. I was so enthralled the whole time. I'm really glad that I played this game and enjoyed it. This game is a game you'll say, wow, I had a lot of fun playing it. It's not really going to leave any memorable moments for you in your head. You're not going to say, oh, you know, oh, that's right. Remember that amazing thing that happened in the story of Saints Row the Third? No, you're not going to say that. You might say, gee, remember when I beat someone with a giant purple dick dildo? Well, how serious can you take that? You know what I mean? It succeeds at what it wants to do, just being a silly, fun game. So, if you like open world games but you don't like things that are taken too seriously, this is your game, okay? But if you're one of these hardcore gamer types who, oh, no, I want something that's super challenging, then this is definitely is not your game. And also, if you're looking for something that's like a serious story with character development and all that, this also is not your game, okay? Saints Row the Third is a game for people who just want to have fun. That's really what it is. You want to have silly fun? Buy this game. It's a hell of a blast. And being that it excels at the gameplay... It has about 20 hours of content. I think it's a really good game. In fact, my one, my one real gripe with the game, and this is my honest one real gripe that I, if I, if I could ask them to improve the game in any way, this is what I would ask for. Really, there's no online play, and that's a little disappointing in a day and age where we have Grand Theft Auto 4 had online play, Red Dead Redemption had online play, and yeah, I know I'm mentioning all Rockstar games, but usually it's Rockstar who does this sandbox style of game. 
why couldn't Saints Row the Third have any kind of competitive multiplayer? Now, it does have co-op, but the co-op, again, a little bit frustrating, is only the, the same campaign that you play by yourself. It's not any new content because you're playing the game co-op, and therefore, there's really no incentive to play co-op unless you and a friend happen to have bought the game and you want to play it together. <clears throat> There's no local co-op, so there's no split-screen co-op. That's another frustrating thing. If you're going to have co-op, you should probably have local co-op as well as online co-op. This game only has online co-op. So, really, the online play is co-op only. It's a multiplayer only over or Xbox Live or PSN. It's frustrating. I wanted to, to beat this game and then say, all right, now I get to play three, a couple more hours you know, of online play. I thought that would have added a lot to the game. They didn't go that route. They said, you know what, we're just going to make a game that we think is, is fun enough on its own to warrant your purchase. Maybe they didn't want to tack on multiplayer. Maybe they saw the multiplayer of games like the Grand Theft Auto 4 and said, eh, it didn't seem that good. It seemed like it was tacked on. And a lot of the times it did seem like that. I do agree there. Um, and I do think that the game is worthy enough with the content that it has to be a $60 purchase. So, overall, my rating of Saints Row the Third. I'm going to give it an 8, okay, which is a great score for me. And some people might be amazed that I gave it that high of a score. Some people might be disappointed because if you look at the major me gaming media right now, some p places have given this game a 10. I'm not kidding you. Some places have given it a 9. Some places have given it like a 9.5. It seems like the consensus is it's a 9 or a 10. This game is not a 9 or a 10, like I said. It doesn't have any kind of a gripping story, anything that you're going to say, wow, I, I'm so happy I played this game because I enjoyed it so much. It moved me, and the gameplay was good. This is pretty much all just crazy gameplay. It does For me, it's not the total package, you know what I mean? When I really think of a game that's like one of the best of the year, it has to be the total package. I don't feel like I got that out of Saints Row the Third. I think it's a great game. I think it's definitely worth a buy if you like sandbox-style games, or if you just like having fun playing games you don't really care about seriousness. But it is what it is. I give it an 8 out of 10. Okay? So that's it for The Hateful Truth. For Saints Row the Third. Hope you enjoyed it, and I hope that uh, it was very informative to you. And honestly, being that games like this don't necessarily always sell as well as some of the other mainstream games, I hope that at least my review has convinced some people who maybe were on the fence to get this game. Because it is a good game, it's worthy of purchasing. I hope they continue the series with Saints Row 4 or Saints Row the Fourth or whatever they want to call it, because I think it does deserve another entry. They're doing a really good job with this series. All right. Thanks a lot, and I'll see you guys next time for The Hateful Truth.